We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Good morning. Hey everybody, welcome to Grace Life. Once again, we are so glad you are worshiping with us today, uh, but we would love to know you're here. If you would do me a favor, if this is your first time, either click the link for our connection card or simply text hello to the number on the screen. Say hello to us, we're going to say hello back to you. Hey, before we go any further, I've got big news today, and the big news is this is the last time that I'm going to have to stand in an empty room to preach to you. That's right. This week we are beginning our in-person worship gatherings again. The entire plan for that's on our website. Go and check that out. But we're going to be starting this Thursday night, June 11th. We're going to have a limited capacity and implementing social distancing measures. And so in order to do that, you will need an e-ticket to get into the worship service this Thursday night. Those are available right now. So go to our website, get one of those. I shouldn't have told you that because no one's going to listen to anything else I have to say this morning. You're all busy getting your tickets. Come on back, get your tickets later. Okay, so the second big thing that is happening this week is that we are in our summer of serve here at Grace Life. It's something we do to make Jesus famous in our city and to serve the people of Columbia from Memorial Day to Labor Day every year. And this Saturday, we have opportunities all throughout the city. So again, you need to sign up for those. Go to our website, check out how you can be involved in making a difference in our city for Jesus. All right, everybody, we're in a series on hearing the voice of God. Today is actually part two. And we see all throughout Scripture that God wants to dwell with his people and speak to his people. And so for this series, we're putting the way that God speaks to us or the way that we hear God into three categories. We started the series last week with what we're referring to as God's spiritual voice, right? God is spirit. God puts his spirit inside of each of us. We have a spirit, so there should be no surprise. There is a spiritual voice that maybe you'd want to use the word internal. There's an internal voice. Today, I want to talk about another category, and I'm going to call it today his natural voice. I've referred to this in the past as his physical voice or his practical voice, but I've decided I like the word natural better, and here's why. It's because I believe God is speaking through our natural world around us, through what takes place in our world. And so primarily I'm talking about people and circumstances. There are natural people and there are natural circumstances that take place in our natural world. And I believe God is speaking through those. And so we're talking about God's natural voice. Matter of fact, we're so used to people and circumstances and a natural world that sometimes we don't realize God is speaking through the things that are happening right around us. But the Bible actually says that our steps are ordained by God, meaning some of our circumstances are laid out right before our way by God. The Bible tells us that God ordains the time we're going to live and the place we're going to live. So if, if God does that, how can we not believe that God is speaking through our natural world, through our time, through our circumstances, and through the people around us? Matter of fact, we actually seem to acknowledge this kind of all the time uh, with comments like if we didn't get a job, somebody will say something like, well, I guess that's not what God had for me. So we're just agreeing that we believe God has something to do with that. Other people would have the complete opposite reaction and say, why God didn't I get the job? So we would just blame God for it. Either way, it's clear that we think God is dictating some of the things that is happening in the world around us to speak to us. Uh, matter of fact, some of us even make up really funny sayings to describe this. And I, I'm sorry if I pick on one of you this morning, but one of the funniest I've ever heard talking about our circumstances and God is when, when we say something like, well, when God closes a door, he opens a window. 
And, and I don't know where that came from. It certainly didn't come from the Bible, but look, here, here's the idea. The idea is we believe God is working through what is taking place around us. Matter of fact, let's, let's just stop and talk about COVID-19 for a minute. How many of you have had your life totally disrupted, your routines turned upside down by COVID-19, right? Yeah. Okay, look, if you didn't, the rest of us, we hate you because our lives have been completely turned upside down. But think about it this way. Before COVID, there were so many of us saying, oh, I can't stand the pace and the routine of my life. I don't spend enough time with my kids. I'm so busy. So much is going on. I am so exhausted. And yet very few of us were doing anything to make a change. And now suddenly we've made a change. Matter of fact, some of our changes have been so drastic. I've talked to people who say they'll, they'll be working from home forever. There's just been a permanent change. And if you think about maybe your schedule and, and the, the ways that things have happened, how many of you have made some permanent changes or at least expect to make some permanent changes to the exhaustion and the routine and the pace when we are allowed to begin to do things again? And so there's a fair question to ask. Do you think God's been speaking to you through this? How many of you would say, yeah, I think that God has been trying to get my attention through what has been happening because of COVID-19? So look, today as we jump into the Bible to look at this, I just want to go ahead and uh, call out the elephant in the room, and that is that there, there's just a huge debate in the, in the church world today among Christians about God's sovereign control. There are those of us that believe God is back from a distance, only controlling the really big picture, and, and then there are those who believe that every little detail is ordained by God. And, and I'm not going to get into that debate today, but I'm going to tell you this. What you believe about God's control of the world is going to determine how much you believe God is speaking through what is happening around you. But however uh, you believe about that, no matter how involved you think God is, we've got example after example in the Bible of people believing that God's speaking through what's happening around them. I don't know if you've ever heard of the story of Gideon, if you're familiar with that, but uh, Gideon was a guy that God came to and said, I want you to do this for me, and, and he has a little conversation and then says, well, you know, I just want to make sure, God, you're the one that's really speaking to me. So he, he comes up with this idea, I'm going to lay a fleece on the ground tonight, and well, if the ground in the morning has dew but the fleece doesn't, I'll believe you spoke to me through that circumstance. And it goes exactly as he asked God to make it happen, <laughs> but then he wanted to make real sure that he was wasn't hearing from God wrong, so he tells God the next night to do the exact opposite, to put dew on the fleece, but not the ground. And those circumstances, again, worked out exactly as he asked. And so, Gideon was able to say, I guess, because of my circumstances, God is speaking to me. And matter of fact, when one of the disciples betrayed Jesus, his name was Judas, the rest of the disciples said, well, we've got to replace him. Who do we replace him with? And they looked to their circumstances. They actually grabbed uh, what we would refer to as dice today. At that time, it was a, a pair of stones, uh, and it was written on there, something like dice. And, and so they cast lots, and they just said, look, which, however these things land, we're going to believe is the voice of God. So I want to show you one example in particular of how and why God speaks to us through our circumstances. It's the story of a guy named Balaam, and we're going to pick up the story where he is beginning a journey. And so we're in Numbers chapter 22, for those of you that want to follow along at home, and we're going to start right in verse 22 as well. And it says, God's anger was kindled because he, Balaam, went, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in his way as his adversary. And so now he was riding on the donkey, his two servants were with him, and the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. The donkey turned aside out of the road and went into the field, and Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back into the road. So then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on either side. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed against the wall, pressed Balaam's foot against the wall, and he struck her again. Third time, then the angel of the Lord went ahead and he stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she simply lay down under Balaam and Balaam's anger was kindled. He struck the donkey again. So then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. 
And he bowed down and fell on his face. And I'm thinking, you better. I mean, seriously, I, I think I would do the same thing, right? And, and the angel of the Lord said to him, man, why have you hit your donkey these three times? Behold, I've come out to oppose you because your way is perverse before me. The, the angel says, look, I'm opposing your way because your way is wrong. God is not happy with what you're doing. So the donkey actually saw me and turned aside these three times. And matter of fact, if she had not done that, I surely would have killed you and let her live. That's, that's scary when, when the angel of the Lord says, I would have let your donkey live, but you, uh-uh. You know, that, I don't know. I would have take that pretty seriously if I were Balaam. And, and he did. Here's the good news. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, Whoa, I have sinned, for I did not know that it was you standing in the road against me. I just thought it was my crazy donkey. I didn't realize you were up to something directing my life. So, look, now therefore, if it's evil in your sight, I'll go back. I'll turn around. And the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go, go with the men, but speak only the word that I tell you. So look, it's very clear in Scripture and in this story especially, God either makes things happen or allows things to happen in order to direct our lives and get our attention. And I want to show you specifically three things that God did right here through Balaam's circumstances. The first one is that he protected him. Uh, the story made it real clear. The angel looked at him and just said, look, if the donkey had not turned, I would have killed you. And it was simply because of the reaction of the donkey that he was protected, right? The second thing is to get his attention. Like how many times, just think for in your own life, how many times do we just go about our way? Balaam just decided, I'm going, I'm doing this thing. Uh, the earlier part of the story I didn't read to you as Balaam asked God, should he go? God says no. Uh, they offer him more money, so Balaam asked a second time. I just think it's funny how <laughs> we do that. Well, God, I might not have heard you right. The, the, the uh, salary just went up. Let me pray about it again. This time God says, okay, I'm going to let you go. And so Balaam starts on this little journey. Uh, but he just went and was doing his own thing. And so think about your own life. How many times do you just get up during the day and go about the routine? Well, I got to be at work at nine, so I go to work. I drive this road and I'm going to have a lunch appointment at 12, so I'm going to go to lunch. How many times do we stop and say, God, I'm supposed to be at work at nine. Do you want me to go? God, I usually take this road. Would you like me to take that road or another? God, I'm supposed to have a lunch appointment with this person. Is that really what you want for me today? And look, maybe to some degree it's a good idea that we don't overreact to those questions because Christians would start to be some of the most, the most flaky people in all the world. Well, you know, I know I'm supposed to be at work, but I prayed this morning and decided I'm not coming in. Try to get, get a bunch of us telling our bosses that. That really wouldn't speak very well for Jesus either. But here's the truth. We don't ask those questions at all. We, we just kind of go about our way. This is what I'm going to do today. It's what's on my calendar. I'm not going to think about it. And so sometimes I believe God has to put something in the way to get our attention. And so the third thing uh, that God was doing here was simply directing him. You see, Balaam was on his way to do something big. He was actually on his way to curse the people of God. That's what he had been hired to do. Come out and curse the people of God. And so here's the thing, God wanted to make sure that as Balaam went to do this, that he understood the fear of God so that he would only say what God wanted him to say. He would only do what God wanted him to do. Now look, I don't know if those are the only reasons that God speaks through our circumstances, but as you look throughout Scripture and maybe you examine your own life, I think it's very clear, story after story, we see God doing those three things, that God is either trying to get our attention, God is trying to protect us, or God is trying to direct our way through our circumstances. Let's talk about how God speaks through people. We'll give you another example. This is of a guy named Moses, a famous character in the Bible. And uh, we're going to pick up a story where he is leading the Israelites out of Egypt and into the promised land. It's chapter 18, verse 13 is where we're going to begin. So the next day Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood around Moses from morning till evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he's doing for the people, he said, well, what are you doing, man? This is, this is crazy. Why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning till evening? And Moses said to his father-in-law, well, 
because the people come to inquire of me to God. I, I, I've got to answer questions. I've got to talk to God for them. And, and then sometimes they have a dispute, and they come to me, and I decide between one person and another. <laughs> and I make the statutes of God and his laws. No, I mean, just think about that. Moses sits all day and listens to people going, he took my donkey. Well, he took my, my sheep first. Well, my tent was supposed to go there. No, that's where my tent goes. I mean, can, any parents out there listening, you know what I imagined doing that not for just two or three or four kids, but doing that for an entire nation of whiny people. And uh, there are other stories in the Bible with Moses and the people where it, he, he definitely believes they are whiny people and they're very difficult to lead. So look, here we go. Moses' father-in-law says, look, what you're doing is not good, man. You and the people with you will wear yourselves out for this thing is too heavy for you to do by yourself. You cannot do it alone. So obey my voice. You get that? Here is a man speaking and saying, listen to me, because I will give you advice and God be with you. He's actually saying, if you listen to me and do what I say, it's God speaking through me to you. God's going to be with you if you do what I say. I'm going to speak to you some wisdom here. And let's make sure we understand the situation, because first of all, this is Moses. If you're not familiar with who Moses is in the story, Moses is the one who heard the voice of God through a burning bush. I mean, he's walking along one day and there's a burning bush. He turns aside and the voice of the Lord comes out of this bush. Are you kidding me? He has had one of the greatest encounters with hearing from God that any of us could ever dream of. After that, if you go and follow Moses' life in Scripture, he begins to talk to God on a regular basis. He talks to God all the time. He hears from God, and he goes and talks to someone else, and he, he delivers messages to Pharaoh of Egypt, and, he, and he's always talking. Matter of fact, in this example, he said, look, I inquire to God for the people. So all day long, he's even talking to God for the people back and forth. He doesn't have a difficulty hearing from God. So you might ask, then why? Would God need to speak through another person if Moses talks to God so much and Moses can hear from God so well? Well, I don't know if he had to. I just know he did. And maybe the reason for that is how many times did we hear from morning till evening? Moses sat from morning till evening. Moses answered their questions from morning till evening. Moses mediated their arguments from morning till evening. How many of you get into a situation in your life where you're just busy? Maybe you've got a deadline, stuff is going on, you've got final exams in school, or you've got a project due for your boss, and you are working from morning till evening and morning till evening. How about moms at home right now with COVID and kids? Man, from morning till evening. What am I going to eat? What are we going to do? Can we go outside and play? Ah, you know, from morning till evening. And then there's the whininess of, they took this from me. That's my sheep. That's my tit. You know, that's my iPad. Give it back, get out of my room. You know, all that kind of stuff for your boss saying, this isn't done, that's not done. And you're just so frustrated from morning till evening. We don't take time to just get quiet and say, God, what, what do I need to change about my life? God, what do I need to do? Moses was so busy from morning till evening hearing for the people their questions, he wasn't talking to God about his own life. It wasn't even on his radar to say, hey, God, do you think I'm doing this the right way? He was too busy just keeping up with the way to question the way. I think a lot of us know exactly what Moses was going through. We, we spend a lot of our time from morning till evening just keeping up with life. So sometimes God has to send people to tell us what we're not hearing any other way. God has to send people to answer questions we should be asking, but we're simply not. So here's what we see. God speaks through people. God speaks through circumstance. God has a natural voice. God speaks through people. God speaks through circumstance. But as, as we try to apply that to our lives here today, uh, the most important question comes up, which is how do we know when it's God? How do we know when God is working and speaking through this circumstance? How do we know when God is speaking through this person? Because let's be very clear. First of all, we know the devil is at work. 
And, and second of all, we know there are some crazy people that say crazy things, and not everything every person says reflects the heart of God. So we, we can't just say, well, a person said it, it's God. We can't just say, well, you know, automatically there is no devil anymore, so anything is perfect. And we've got to be able to look at our circumstances and ask the question, is this from God? What is God saying through this? We have to look at what people say to us and say, is this the voice of God to me? How do we know? Maybe some of you have used the phrases or heard other people use the phrases, open door, closed door. They'll say, well, you know, looks like there's an open door. I guess I'm going to walk through it. Looks like there's a closed door. I guess I'm not going that way. And so the questions we, we ask are, okay, if there's an open door, is this God saying go? Or is this a trap from the enemy? If there's a closed door, is this God saying stop? Or is this the enemy simply trying to stand in our way? So the answer, everybody ready for this? The answer to how do you know when God is, is speaking through this circumstance is you can't, not by the circumstance alone. You can't know just by the circumstance alone. I'm going to prove it to you. Look at this in Scripture right here. Paul, who wrote the majority of our New Testament, found himself in a circumstance. And here's what he said. Look, but I'm going to stay in Ephesus until Pentecost. For a wide door for effective work has opened to me. Okay, Paul, I get it. That's why you're going to stay. And there are many adversaries. Paul, I don't get it. That's why you should go. Paul, I'm confused. So there's an opportunity to preach. Okay, that's why you should stay. There are people who want to kill you and actively are trying to kill you, and you won't get to preach ever again. You should go. You should stay. You should go. Oh, have you ever found yourself looking at your circumstances and going, well, it kind of looks like I should stay. It kind of looks like I should go. I don't know if the adversaries are, 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 are the devil and, and the, the open doors. This God. Now, Paul clearly discerned he should stay. His circumstances said he should go and he should stay, but he discerned he should stay. How did he come to that? How do you and I come to such a conclusion? Well, there are ways. And the first one that confirms is his spiritual voice. Look, if you missed part one of this series, the whole series is simply not going to make sense. And so, although you don't have to do them in order, you do need to get part one. Matter of fact, I'd say part one is kind of the crux of the series, learning to hear God's spiritual voice to us. And so, I just want to encourage you, if you've missed that, go back and get that. But as you look at your circumstances, and what I believe Paul did is he looked at the fact that, that somebody wants to kill him, but there is such a great opportunity to preach the gospel and see people come to know Jesus. In his spirit, he just just thought, I, I, I'm just going to take this opportunity. It feels good to me. People are going to come to know Jesus and God's going to protect me. I, I, I just, you, you have to answer the question for you when you face circumstances. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What do you believe God is pushing you toward? What do you believe God is pushing you away from? What are we thinking about this as we talk to God? Again, it's that spiritual voice. We have to go back and get that. A second question for confirmation would be, does Scripture speak to the question you're asking? And we're going to talk a lot about God's written voice next week, but right now I just want to go ahead and say you just always have to ask the question, does the Bible say yes or no about the question I'm asking right now? And then the third way that God confirms, should I stay or should I go, is through people. Matter of fact, there were multiple times in the Bible where Paul had people saying, Paul, you shouldn't go. Paul, you should go. Paul, you should do this. You shouldn't do that. And so we know that God also speaks through people. So let's talk about how do we hear God's voice through people. Well, again, it's confirming. When, when, sometimes when people come and talk to us, they say things to us that we're already uh, thinking about, we're already praying about. It's already going on in our hearts. And a good example might be you're just tired, you're exhausted, you're, you're kind of getting run down, you're not at the top of your game. Some of your friends are like, man, have you, have you thought about take a little break, you know, take a little vacation, and, and then maybe things get a little worse, and, and you think, maybe I need to see a doctor. Somebody says, you should see a doctor, and so you go see a doctor, and the doctor says, yeah, look, you're just running yourself into the ground. You need to slow down. You need to take a vacation, and you say, you know what? I think that might be God. Maybe I need to take a break, and, and so we understand that sometimes what we're hearing through other people around us, it is simply confirming what we've already been feeling and thinking, and, and so we go, okay, you know what? I think God's trying to get my attention. He was telling it to me, and I just kept working hard. He told it to my friends, and, and I just kind of brushed them off. But now even the doctor is saying. So, you know, that, that's a lot of people all saying the same thing 
Maybe God is confirming something. You know, another way that people speak to us is illuminating. Because sometimes we're not thinking it. Sometimes it's not on our radar. We all have blind spots. We all have weaknesses. And sometimes God will send a person to us to say, hey, you need to think about this. Uh, one of the stories for me, uh, by the way, my wife and I just finished celebrating our 24th wedding anniversary. Woohoo! thank you. I'm hoping you're cheering for us. Uh, but anyway, here's the thing. About 23 and a half years ago, as we were first married, uh, we were out with some friends and uh, some folks from our church. And, and uh, you know, we were just laughing, having a good time. And, and my wife said something. And, and uh, I, I made a comment that was a very common comment uh, that I'd heard around all the time. My sisters would say it. My, bro- uh, my friends would say it. You know, brothers and sisters all the time would make these comments and whatever. It, it was just a very common comment. Somebody would say, see, look what I have to live with, you know. And, and it seemed like a joke. And I just said it as a joke. Didn't think anything about it. Yeah, and then a few days later, uh, one of the men that was at the table at dinner that night, he said, hey, hey, Jimmy, can I talk to you? And I said, oh, sure. And I, said, I put a big smile on my face. I'm ready for him to tell me how great I am at something. And, and that's not what happened at all. He said, hey, uh, you know that thing you said about your wife at dinner? And then he began to tell me uh, what was really not right about that. And, and in his case, you know, he actually, his wife had, had developed a pretty grave uh, physical and mental condition to where she was no longer able to function, and, and yet he took care of her, and he served for Jesus every day of his life, and, and, and he's saying, look, you know, how, how can you say, look what I have to live with? Look, man, people have hard lives out there, and I just, I felt so bad, first of all, for being insensitive to people like him, but also he made me aware for the first time that I was dishonoring my wife just by a simple joke that, that people say all the time. And I simply wasn't aware of it. It wasn't on my radar. Everybody else laughed. And so sometimes God will send a person to speak to you to illuminate something that is not on your radar but needs to be because we have blind spots. And then when we want to talk about people, we also just need to ask the question, who are they? Who are they? No, look, I'm just going to go ahead and let you know, uh, God can, can speak through anybody. We, we saw the story, God speaks through the donkey. If God can speak through a donkey, he can speak through a jerk. And sometimes if you're being a jerk, God may rebuke you by anybody. I mean, and so we need to always be willing to, to learn from anyone around us. But what I really want to talk about is when we are trying to hear God's voice. When we're in a situation like Paul, should I stay or should I go? There's a great opportunity, but there's bad news with it. Should I, what should I do? And we want to know if God would confirm what we should do through other people. When we go to seek God's voice through people, we need to ask some questions like, are they wise? Are they discerning? Are these people people who hear God's spiritual voice? Are these people people who have submitted their lives to following God and trying to be on the right path and recognizing that God speaks to them. Because I'm I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, all voices are not created equal. And and so in my own life, if I am seeking life direction, I'm, I'm not going to ask life direction from somebody whose life is in the ditch because they're not submitting their life to God. I go to people who are following God. Matter of fact, I've got a very specific group of people that I go to in my life. When I'm not sure what my circumstances are saying, when I've got an opportunity to do something or not do something, and and I've had opportunities where I've been invited places to preach, countries to go to, and then uh, right at the last minute, some things got really questionable. I had one trip in particular that got really questionable. Everybody who was supposed to go with me bailed at the last minute through circumstances, lost passports or whatever else. Everybody I tried to get to go with me couldn't go. And, and so I began to wonder, is, is this plane going to crash? Is God trying to tell me not to go? And, and so I had strange circumstances. So I went to people that I believe hear God's spiritual voice just, just like I do, but it's my life, so I was really confused. And, it, and it's harder to hear sometimes a spiritual voice when it's such a pressing topic in your own life. And so I went to some people and said, hey, pray with me. And tell me what you feel. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you believe God is saying. And so I believe all of us need those people. Maybe it's your pastor. I hope it's your spouse. 
Listen, if you're a, a child still living at home, I believe your parents, God has placed in your life, and, and that voice is, should be doubly as loud if, if your parents are, are believers who know how to hear the voice of God. And we need to be willing to hear from wise and discerning people in our lives. So I, I want to encourage us today uh, to, to start listening. Uh, to be aware God is speaking through the things that's happening in the world around us. We need to simply start paying attention. Uh, again, as we were saying at the very beginning, we, we say, well, I guess God didn't want me to do that. Or we say, why God when it doesn't work out? So we sort of want to blame him. Well, if, if that's the case, why don't we really stop and just say, God, what are you doing? I believe God wants to dwell with his people and speak to his people. I believe everything that is happening around us is God directing and getting our attention and, in a sense, speaking to us through that. And so as a result, I don't think things are quite as random as some of us may believe. I think things are a lot more intentional. And I think one of the best things that we can learn to do is just to ask the question, God, what are you doing? Or maybe word it this way, God, what do you want from me? What do you want me to do in, in the midst of whatever I'm experiencing? You know, a, a lot of times people will just get really upset. Things don't work out the way they want. I've heard a lot of people uh, blame their circumstances. Man, the devil's just having a filled day. And, and uh, you know, yes, the devil's at work and, and uh, he exists. But I believe God is bigger. I believe God is greater. That's how I read scripture. And so even when things are going the way I don't think they should go, even when things are an absolute mess, and even when I prayed for it to work out one way and it works out another way, I just stop and say, God, what are you doing? What do you want me to get from this? Let me, let me give you one example. As we've talked about COVID and we're still in the midst of a, a pandemic with COVID-19, you know, when this first began, uh, everybody had all kinds of reactions, and then churches could no longer meet because we weren't allowed to gather in large groups all across our nation. Virtually every church had to shut its doors to physical gatherings. And, and as soon as that happened, a lot of people started voicing, this is a demonic attack against the church. And, and I'll be honest, I didn't go there. And uh, after months of this happening, I've decided I don't think that's what was really happening. I think God was getting our attention to some things. And let me just tell you kind of what God did in my life. I, I'm a person who was always against having online church. And prior to COVID-19, we didn't do what we're doing this morning. There was no way for you to stay at home if you were sick that day or if you were a mom with kids and a kid had a fever. You couldn't put them in the nursery or take them to church. You had to stay home. There was no way for you to get what we're getting here today because I was against it. And I thought that I was right. I had this idea. I don't think people should just be able to sit and watch TV for a few minutes and then say they're, they're in a church. They're involved in a church. They're not serving. They're, they're not making a difference. What are they doing? They're just watching. And, and I was just very, very critical of that. It, but then as COVID-19 happened and we all had to stay home, I've discovered God was moving. And we have heard story after story after story over these last few months of people who have come to make Jesus their savior because the church came to their house when they would have never come to a building. And I have to sit and go, wait a minute, God, I was so wrong. I, I thought I was so right. I was so on a path from morning till evening doing what I thought you told me to do. I wasn't asking the question that I should have been asking. Matter of fact, some people were telling me we should be doing this and I just discounted them. And so what I discovered through my circumstances that, that God was up to something. God has been up to something. And I think his church across the world has learned something powerful. Many people have been touched in a way they would have never been touched. I think what I've learned, and I hope a lot of other people have learned, it's not either or, it's both and. It's not a question of which is right or wrong. It's a question of how many ways can we reach the world for God. And so in just this one example of being stuck at home and no way to change that, no matter how much you wanted to, I've seen God speak to me. I've seen God move. And I've seen God literally bring people into his kingdom because the church has gone into their living room through a TV or a computer. And so I believe God's speaking all the time 
through our natural world. When a pandemic hits, I think we need to stop and say, God, what are you saying? Whatever is happening in our world, we need to stop and say, God, what are you saying? And if we don't recognize that, then I'm, I'm afraid we're just going to go about life missing out on God speaking. And the, the sad part is that most of us are saying, I just feel so lonely and I feel so separated from God. I just wish God would speak. Well, I believe he is. And I believe we're not as alone as we feel. I think God is not silent. I believe God is speaking very loudly. We simply just may not be listening. Let me pray for us today. God, I thank you so much that you are a God who loves us and cares about us. And you don't want to just sit far away and watch. But you are personally involved in the lives of your children. And as a result, you speak to us in many ways. And God, we want to learn to hear your voice. We want to learn to hear your spiritual voice as we've talked about. We also want to learn to recognize when what is happening around us is you getting our attention. We want to learn when some people say things to us, it is you getting our attention. So God, I pray right now that you will just tune our ears to what you are doing in the natural world around us so that we hear your natural voice as well as your spiritual voice. God, we thank you that you love us and speak to us. If you would just stay in a place of prayer, I want to take a moment. I want to talk to those of you that have yet to make Jesus your king. Look, there is no greater gift than the fact that God is personally involved in our lives. And, and he's done that by redeeming each of us, by sending his son to die on the cross so that we can have a personal relationship with him. That there's no longer anything that prevents us from getting close to God and God getting close to us because Jesus died paying for our sins. Then he rose again, giving us the promise of eternal life. If you have yet to surrender your life to God, then you probably are feeling a gap and a distance between you and him. And we can solve that right now. If you've never made Jesus your king, I want to help you do that this morning, right where you are. Maybe you're seated on a couch. Maybe you're kneeling on your living room floor. It doesn't matter. But I want to lead you in a conversation. Say something like this to yourself and to God. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died for me. And now I want to live for you. I thank you that you love me. I thank you that I'm forgiven. I thank you that you're involved in my life. And I thank you that you speak to me. My simple prayer today is that you will fill me with your spirit and give me a life of great meaning in your kingdom. Amen. Let's celebrate with those people, everybody. God bless you. See you next week.